Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to our new tutorial series on the performance testing. This channel brings to you another set of tutorials of ISTQB specialist certification, which is about performance testing. Based on a lot of requests, I'm creating this tutorial series for all of you in order to get certified. So calling out all the performance test engineers to look forward to this particular course and get certified with ISTQB on performance testing. In order to get started, the very first thing we are talking about is introduction to the ISTQB. I'm not sure you know, when you talk about foundation, you might have appeared along back and uh, it's just a quick overview that of course ISTQB stands for International Software Testing Qualification Board and this is a body which certifies individuals on their practices about testing and being called as a professional tester. Now, of course, the ISTQB has a lot of certifications, which you can definitely include or view on the ISTQB.org official website. Here is a list of all the certifications which uh, ISTQB is currently providing, and you definitely have all these uh, courses which are marked with a blue arrow on the channel so of course you can find all these tutorials already available if in case you're interested to get certified with another certification do explore my account and you will definitely find uh, more information about the same in fact on the channel as well you would see a lot of uh, you know these tutorials already being lined up so you can look forward to that and recommend many others about the same so right now we are targeting on the right top corner uh, we have performance testing which is the foundation level but from the specialist section and we are looking forward to that and uh, we will be covering the same additionally when it comes to the validity of these certifications they are valid for the lifetime and there is no maintenance exams for these certifications you just write it once for all for your entire life as far as you are interested to write it again if in case syllabus changes that's completely optional and you don't really have to worry about it because it's just like academics that once you graduate even if the syllabus changes you don't have to get graduated again it, it is still holds good that that time you have been through the syllabus whatever it was Moving up to next is now the about the performance testing exam exclusively. That what exactly performance testing exam will consist of is starting with the prerequisite. Number one thing is what exactly you need to have it as an entry criteria before you get started with this preparation. That is foundation level certification. If in case you are not foundation level certified, this exam cannot be taken by you. You have to be qualified with the foundation level certification as a prerequisite before appearing for performance testing examination. So foundation level exam certification becomes qualifying criteria for performance testing certification. The exam type remains the same as usual for all the examination in ISTQB, which is objective or multiple choice questions, where each question will have certain options and you need to pick the right answer from there. There are no subjectives, but certainly there can be a sum of scenario-based questions as well, but hardly two or three questions. Rest all would remain uh, quite simple and straightforward. The number of questions will be 40 here, just like foundation, if you remember. Uh, you would just have 40 MCQs, uh, multiple choice questions, and each question carries one mark. So you just have to get the question right and as you get the question right you get one mark for each now the total marks are being discussed because we are talking about the passing criteria for that the passing criteria remains the same throughout all the examination of uh, istqb it's just that the total marks changes but the passing criteria is 65 percent which comes to 26 marks or more i would like to highlight once again that uh, if in case you have 25 you are not considered as pass. So you need to have at least 26 or more than that out of 40 to get certified with this. Coming to the duration provided here, unlike foundation, here you will be provided with 90 minutes to answer this examination. It's just because it's a performance testing specialist certification. So some of the questions would require a little more effort. So more than uh, foundation, you need better efforts here. So you will be provided with 90 minutes of time. That is one and a half hour of time to answer 40 questions. As I told you, there will be some of the scenario driven questions as well. So you will need 90 minutes of time to answer all the 40 questions. But that's more than enough to answer all the questions, as I can promise you.
and this is not including the time for other languages than English. You will have 25% of additional time over 90 minutes if you are appearing in a country where the primary language spoken is not English. So you will have more time than 90 minutes to answer that. Schedule a YouTube. Right now we are talking about the pandemic. We are going through a very bad time. So a lot of countries are organizing it online proctor based examination. So you can definitely approach your country specific board to organize an online exam for you. And you can enroll for that and appear for this examination again. Now, the countries who have become stable from the pandemic, they can also write a uh, center based examination, which will be a paper based examination to be conducted. So location and venue no longer matters as far as you are appearing right from your home, just like how you work from home. So that's about the performance uh, testing examination structure. Coming to the effort for preparation on the K level, so there's obviously everywhere whenever you go to for any certification of ISTQB, you do find certain K levels of each and every topic. So every topic has been marked with a particular K level, which basically determines that how much effort you need to put on these topics in order to prepare well for the examination. In other way around, this is the blueprint of your syllabus which states that, for an example, if a topic is marked with K1, you just need to remember the name or the definition of it, and you don't have to do a deeper dive. But if a topic is marked with K4, it means that it might be a scenario-based question, and uh, you need to make sure that if a scenario is provided to you, you should be able to analyze it and then derive the right answer. So just make sure, just like foundation K1, K2, K3, K4, you have remember, understand, apply, and analyze. So there are some K4 level questions as well here, and we do have questions from majority side from K2 and K3. So K1 also are there, but less, but K2 and K3 are more compared to K1 and K4. So it's just that the topic which is marked with K4, you just don't have to read it or understand it or just apply it. You may have to analyze it because a scenario-driven question will be coming up from K4 level topics. So just make sure that you put equal efforts according to the K level highlighted for each topic. Last but not the least, quickly highlighting that what kind of chapters you're going to have in this particular syllabus. So this entire syllabus is broken down into five chapters. Chapter one being basic concepts and you will be introduced to some of the basic understanding of what exactly performance testing is and what it takes to be called as a performance tester. In chapter two, you will be talking about the performance measurement fundamentals that how exactly certain calculations and scenario measurements can be done because performance testing requires you to be a great uh, you know performance tester and of course requires you to have certain knowledge about how to calculate the load calculations performance engineering but not anything complicated it just means that what are the parameters do you consider when it comes to performance testing of an application and you make sure that you are there to assist it, right? Chapter three will take you through the performance testing in the software lifecycle. That means how exactly performance testing is organized throughout the software development lifecycle. There are certain things which begins right at the beginning and the dynamic way of executing the performance test happens later when it comes to the dynamic level. But of course, the static testing can already begin right from the design level or in fact, the code level. And you can also get started with your basic for performance test right from the unit testing level itself. So aligning those activities uh, to start much earlier in the development life cycle is what you will be elaborated in the chapter three. When it comes to the chapter four, we are talking about the performance testing task it includes all the planning and several other activities which are being performed as a part of it. And you will be given an overview of what exactly are the task of a performance testing uh, you know, level and how exactly it's been organized throughout the process and conducted. Last but not the least, as a part of this certification as well, you will be, you know, given some insight about what kind of tools are available in order to support the performance testing. And you might be knowing a lot of tools being a performance tester yourself, but here we'll be just talking about the architecture of the tool, what kind of features does a tool really contains, what kind of analysis factors they should have so that you can analyze the dynamic execution of the performance test and come up with a conclusion that what exactly need to be done next. So 
Uh, that is what we wanted to convey you at the part of the in, in, introduction to the perform assessing level. Of course, I'm here to get started with each and every topic in more detail, just like my other courses. And I, I want to make sure that all of you understand the concept pretty well and get certified with this as soon as possible. Do feel free to let me know at any point of time if you have got a concern, you've got a question with you, and I'm here to assess you at any point of time. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Just getting started with performance testing introduction. You can expect the next tutorial coming up next very soon. And the next tutorial will talk right from the chapter one, and we will be getting started with the basic concepts in the next tutorial so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning